I want to say good afternoon. This is Sunday, and um, I'm going to record some information on relationships. This is my book, and it is um, titled Dance with Your Partner, Not Their Confusion. Um, and I want to just say that you can like and subscribe at my YouTube channel. On Thursdays, um, I generally do a um, discussion with um, one of our office partners at Renewed Mind Wellness, whose name is Michael Smith, and um, he is a licensed CPC counselor. So in most cases, what he and I do and the agency that I work for, we're reaching out to people that are in need. I'm a substance abuse resident um, counselor. Um, which means that I'm interning, and um, we do groups there, and um, we help people to get back on their feet. But of course, in any good work or thing that you do, it's all um, going to be according to, you know, the work that you put in. So um, we're open at Renewed Mind Wellness, which is in Las Vegas, Nevada, every Monday through Friday from 9 um, to 4 o'clock. We also do groups with children and adolescents. Um, substance abuse program is going on. Um, we just got um, certified by SAPTA, which is an awesome thing. And um, so um, some of the issues that actually lie on my mind before I get into anything concerning the book have to do with um, children. And um, this is not just children today, but something that's been going on for a long time, and that is um, sexual predators. Um, I don't want to say what's happening in our world, but I would say that um, we as parents need to um, just pay a little bit more attention to our children and who we leave them with because the statistics are rising on sexual abuse, and it's also happening in the household um, with the children. I mean, some of this is secret. Um, we, we have to come together um, and give our children ideas on how to um, ask for help or let um, us know that someone has violated them because what happens if they're not given the opportunity or they're threatened by that predator is that they're growing up with all types of mental health um, challenges. And um, they could have lived a successful uh, life, but the uh, life is being taken from them by that violation. And um, when we look at life, life is who we are. Each and every one of us have life flowing in and through our bodies, you know, the energy. And so um, predators take life like lions. If they come in contact with a human being, in most cases, they're going to attack and mutilate a human being. So they take life, and that's the same as a predator. So we want to help predators because what we understand as we study is that predators also have been violated. This is a chain reaction, a domino effect that continues. And because of it, um, we have to begin to teach our kids how to speak out and even adults who haven't talked about it. Um, many of us have been in this position and it's nothing to be ashamed of. What we do is take um, the knowledge of the pain and turn it into our gain and many people will say well how do you do that because now you begin to use your spiritual faculties and uh, as a child you began to pray it's nothing that I learned is something that I'm discussing that has happened to me um, and I took upon myself to talk with the God within me and so I don't think that there's any experience that I've had that I cannot use to help someone else. And that's the power of giving. You know, a lot of times people are thinking that um, I, I give materially or I give physically. We have to learn how to give spiritually because the spiritual part of us is saying give to people that have 
um, experience the same pains that you have. That's like what the anointing does. You go through pain, not because it's yours, but because someone else is going to need your story. Okay, so sexual abuse, um, we have to do something to help our children. So I pray that you would, you know, share the video uh, with others and also get in touch with us if you're going through something like that because um, you can overcome it. Uh, God has given us a willpower. The willpower just it is not just to hurt people or to uh, be negative. The willpower is to learn about the positive aspects of who we are. And many times because we've exercised the negatives when we come into the world and maybe our environment showed us that, we have a hard time exercising the positive and the blessings. Our minds tend to, you know, kind of thwart or just fixate on the pain, the hurt, um, and we become the same products of uh, that issue that we walk through. So I'm going to just read a little bit out of the book, get in touch with us, um, um, and I'll give you the information at the end, okay? So, um, uh, you know, a caption out of the book, it says um, on page four, healthy relationships begin when there is one accord between two of you. That means if you're in a relationship and relationships are not just in um, marriage or boyfriend and girlfriend. Relationship is also um, with your family members, with your brothers, with your sisters at work. Um, if you work in the community, whatever you're doing, relationships are a part of who we are. And so, number one, one of the things that I teach in my groups um my study groups is that um, relationships starts with me first. Um, when I began to understand how to relate to myself, when I began to understand that I love me, it's not a selfish type of love, but I love me and I have a spiritual connection with the higher power within me. Um, I learned that power to be the Christ within me and some have it as the Buddha or um they study other religions. They might be Catholic, um, Muslim. I don't get into um, the segregation of religions because I feel like um, God met me in a place when I was in a dark night of my soul called love everyone. You know, love in spite of their error. So if I can love my brother or my enemies, then I'm building a healthy relationship with myself. First of all, I have to come into relationship with God in me. And that relationship says that I accept that there is more to me than just my physical nature. And so my physical nature begins to cry out. And who do I have to cry out to in the crisis or as when I went through the dark night of the soul, which is a hard, hard season because it's like you're losing everything. And sometimes you feel like you're losing your mind. So anyway... The dark night of the soul made me look at my faults and then take amends to ask for forgiveness. And maybe I didn't, um, I, I, I couldn't reach out to others and say, can you forgive me? But I did in the spirit realm because my heart was sincere, it was broken, it was open. And that's where, you know, we began to... Um, get our communion with God when the brokenness comes because a man's heart is hard as a human being but the brokenness allows us to go deep within and begin to have a um, relationship with the soul of the part of us where the work is you know when you look at John John says beloved I would that you would prosper even as your soul prospers and so we have to be um aware of that soul and so if we're not aligned with the soul and the cellular purpose then what happens is is that we uh, continue to go around the mountains because we're not going deep to find out why we keep having these situations and issues so at the end of the day what relationships teach us is how to connect with our true self um, a lot of people will say well how is that uh, because when your heart is broken or when you're hurt by someone, it's not that you lash out. 
you you go within. And as you go within and you practice that, the mind begins to stop thinking. You meditate, you pray, the mind begins to stop thinking and your communion with God begins to give you information on how you should go about living, how you should be in that relationship, how you should be in that marriage. And, you know, a lot of people will say, well, you know, I prayed and I meditated when I was married. And so what we need to understand as well is that that marriage could have been the beginning of a practice of your process. Um, We live by the standards of people and the people say that till death do you part. But I believe now this is my thought process that if. A person does not work to fix themselves, meaning your mate, and even in in the workplace, it's going to be hard for you to maintain the relationship. If God wants you to be there forever, then God is going to work it out. Now, there's a lot of work in the process of working with people that don't understand that they need to work on themselves. But as we look at it, and we look at it in a a way that is unlimited, everyone needs to work on themselves. None of us are perfect. We came here with the idea that we're perfect. That is a miss. None of us have perfected anything. We all get angry. We all um, feel uh, feelings of jealousy, envy, and strife. See, we're still perfecting these things, and we need our spirit man stronger in order to overcome the frailties of the flesh all right so in the healthy relationship i don't blame i look at myself and um that is a lesson in itself but in order for me to gain my relationship with my spirit man my higher self who really leads me into success what i have to accept is is that i'm not in control anymore i really have never had control of my life It was something always greater that was looking out for me, even though I did not acknowledge it. So here it says healthy relationships begin when there is one accord between the two of you. Um, And that is communion with the father is where individuals should begin their day by building and creating a stronger relationship with God. So at the end of the day, your relationship health is going to come from God. And it does not matter if. The relationship is on the rocks right now. The relationship with God is the number one factor that's going to keep you together. It's going to bring you into a a state of understanding that you are worth all that you've walked through and being born into this life and the purpose and promise that God has given you. You're worth it. So ideally, many times when we have conflict, um, We look at the conflict rather than the solution or even looking at if the conflict is leading us to look at ourselves. You know, we're always looking at one another. We're never looking at each other. And I was telling a group of mine that these two eyes, they're separated for a reason. And they give us a separated thought process because we actually see separated. But when we go within, we begin to see things from a holistic view, which means that my spiritual continuity begins to um, come into a level of maturity and I'm growing and it begins to show me how to see people from love. Now, love conquers a multitude of sin. That's what the word says. So in that love, what happens is, is that I begin to see my brother and my sister hurt. The people on the job that I've been fighting with, I see that they're hurting and so I'm able to pull back and I'm able to um, stand in the peace that passes all understanding which Christ has given us. Nothing is lost. A lot of people, you know, they're saying that I need this and I need that, but if we go back to the scripture and we stand in the scripture and we meditate on it rather than meditating on the problems that we have in relationships, we'll do better because our meditation becomes the solution to the challenge. Or as, you know, I have mentors that have said, like Bishop Jordan, he said that our meditation becomes our medication. And so whatever you meditate on, it becomes 
the answer to the problem, whether it's conflictual meditation or it is peaceful meditation. So I have to make a choice. I have to make a choice. And you can't go into making a choice at this point and saying, well, you know, I want my relationship to work and I don't know how to do it. My first point of view to anybody would be you have to um, get you in order before you can fix a relationship. You know, when you're going through um, spiritual transformation, um, dark night of the soul, um, you're going through uh, marriage battles. In most cases, we're looking at the other person. And people don't have the answers of how to look away from them. But the word of God shows us how to do that. He said, if I trust in the Lord with all my heart and my, my strength, then, you know what I'm saying? I have to find the answer. And the answer is always going to be in your spirit, man. It's not going to be in you um, running your husband down or your wife down, trying to get them to see your point because something has gotten your attention is other than um, truth. All right. So um, the Bible says where two or three of us are, are gathered, there the bless, blessing is, but there's an agreement in um, the gathering. So we have to look at that. Um, my healthy relationship starts with me and God. And this is two. If I start with me, myself, or me and God, then I have to, and that's where I need to begin in order to work on and heal whatever the situation is. Um, and I look away from the conflict, and I, I work with me and God in the Word of God, simply because if I keep looking at the conflicts that I have with others, or that they hate me, or that they're doing this and that, then I'm missing the point, because maybe they're pushing me to my relationship with God, or maybe they're pushing me to my evolution, a greater level of understanding. And so when we look at um, dancing with your partner and not their confusion, the answer is simply that I look to my spirit, the man of God, the spirit of God. I look to the truth. I begin to worship God in spirit and truth. Okay. So I hope that that helps you because um, this helped me. You know, um, yeah, it's helped me a lot. God is my source. God is my everything. No matter what I go through, I couldn't abandon God because God has been there for me when no one else has been. And that's not to say that, you know, the people in my life were just horrible or anything or family. It is simply that God allowed me to go through storms so that I would call or become closer, walk closer to God, because that's part of the walk in life. That's my walk. You know what I'm saying? And my walk is to teach and educate people. Furthermore, uh, my walk, you know, it calls for me to help people that feel like they're mentally despondent or they can't function mentally again. Uh, my walk is also to help families understand that there are predators out there that are taking from their children. And we want to stop these things. So we're advocating, but we're also looking to heal families. We're looking to heal the relationship of the world. Because why are we here anyway? You know, you ask yourself, why are we here? We're not here to just be materialistic people, to acquire homes, to work nine to five. We're not here for that. We're here because God sent us to do something. And if by chance you acquire all of these things that, you know, they told us, we should acquire in America or suggested to us or in other countries uh, alluding to material, then that's okay. But take care of the spirit first, your spirit man, because there is no success without the guidance of your spirit. The strength of your spirit is where you overcome the battles. Amen. So we are located at um, 1311. Uh, Maryland Parkway, um, if you need any help or an assistance, um, we take uh, insurances. Um, you can call us at 702-629-655. Also, we, um, we take cash, 
And so we have MFTs in the office, which is marriage, fair, marriage family and count, counseling therapy, um, LCPC, professional counselors, and um, substance abuse. Um, also, um, I want to just let you know about the nonprofit that I have, which is Interfaith Wealth Builders. Um, we meet on Sunday evenings by um, conference call, and that's been going on for about nine years now. We begin to build up um, the homeless uh, initiative, which um, helps homeless people. We haven't got where we want to, but you know we're, we're still pressing into the work. And we also are doing workshops and conferences. So if you want to know about the conferences, you can give us a call at 702-629-655, Renewed Mind Wellness. And we're um, also um, on the internet um, at RenewedMindWellness.org or um, with the nonprofit for uh, the humanitarian cause of outreaching to um, the homeless, we are at www.ifwbuilders.com. So I will see you on Thursday. Please share this video. Um, and I love you in the Lord. God bless. Oh, yeah, we have a conference call tonight, which is Sunday, uh, and it's the new moon. And uh, the conference call is every Sunday at 6 30. And so if you're interested in being a part, it is biblically based. We have people that are um, studying, um, they're Muslims, so they study the Quran. And I think it's wonderful that we can come together with the different religions and actually share and not um, hold separate um, camaraderies. Just come together in love and do a work. All right. So um, email us at Kim Warner. 27 at gmail.com to find out about our um, Sunday evening conference calls. All right. Thank you. God bless you. Have a good evening.